once we've enjoyed rest for ourselves and seen the benefits of it, then there's resting for God's sake. For God's sake, rest. Because He wants to enjoy you while you rest, and He wants to enjoy uh, rest with you. He takes pleasure in your resting. Rest, we offer work to the Lord, we understand that, but we are to also offer our rest to the Lord. Well, let's talk about this further as we've discussed or we go on to discuss these passages. Again, I, I simply uh, repeat here a standard verse, there are many like it, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord, an offering to the Lord your God. Now, what does the Sabbath of the Lord reflect? What, what does it represent? What does it mean? Well, first, the Sabbath unto the Lord reflects His character because it's a holy Sabbath unto the Lord. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. It is to be set apart. First, the Sabbath unto the Lord reflects His character, His holiness. Treat something as holy. Treating something as holy means it is to be set apart from the common stuff of life, the common work, the common chores of life. Uh, so it's not common, it's, it's special. Treat rest as something really special, privileged, like you'd get on your, your finest clothes for a special event. You'd put a nice tablecloth for a nice dinner, a special event. Don't treat rest as some ordinary thing. It's special. As I've emphasized, it is holy on the Lord because God is holy. It is a chamber of holiness, not the common stuff that life is made out of, the routines of work and family and even church at times. A culture that has no time for rest has no time for holiness and no time for God. I, I hope you get the impact of that statement. A culture that has no time for rest, that goes on and on, it has no time for holiness because rest and holiness go together. And a culture that cannot rest has no time for God. And we may do many things in ministry for God, in service in the church and in the community, but they no longer become holy because they lack an aspect of restedness. Uh, Sabbath is a restful thing, a holy thing. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Well, second, the Sabbath unto the Lord puts God's work ahead of mine. When we are constantly working, we're thinking about what our hands do, what our minds have created, what good things or things that are less than the best that we have done. And it's all about us. It's like a city is the domain and the kingdom of man. Look at the buildings that man has made. Look at, but you go out in the countryside and you see things that are growing without man. Uh, the trees, the weeds, the other things that are out there, the birds and, and so forth. It is more like the realm of God. We see God's creation in action. Second, a Sabbath unto the Lord puts His work ahead of main, mine. That means I cease my work long enough to recognize and appreciate His unfathomable works. I put my work aside to see, what is God doing? What has He done? And the Exodus account of the fourth commandment focuses on God's handiwork in creation. And there you have it again. In Exodus, the emphasis is on God working in the heavens and creating earth and the sea and everything in them. Uh, then He rested. So we pause in this commandment to recognize God's work. And it's a great time to go for a walk to take part of your time, let's say you take three hours a week, you take a half hour to an hour, and you go for a walk, or you sit in a park, or you might read about God's creation. Maybe it's winter out and it's too cold to walk, but you can read a book, uh, and you can now get on the internet and see the beauty of creation. Let me see what animals live in Africa. Let me look at God's, 
Uh, amazing creations. Let's talk about the water buffalo. Let's talk about the lion. Let's look at God's creation of, uh, of the giraffe. Who would have thought of making such a tall, gangly animal? God loves variety. And you start to look at what God has made. And you put aside, you're no longer talk, talking about the papers that you have to grade as a teacher. You've put aside, even as a pastor, your sermon notes. And now you're looking, what amazing things God has made. Look at the variety that he has made. Let's look at the bugs in Australia or something else. And, and there's no end today to use the computer, the web, and to get on and, and look at the variety that God has made. Amazing as it is. So it's a time to put his work before mine. And pretty soon I relax about mine because I'm enjoying what he does in many great ways to perfection. Thirdly, a Sabbath unto the Lord celebrates deliverance. We have the Exodus account, and I'm going to talk about this again later. The Deuteronomy account of the fourth commandment includes an emphasis on deliverance. Remember that you were slaves in Egypt where you could not rest. You had day after day of work. You were slaves in Egypt and that the Lord your God brought you out of there with a mighty hand, outstretched harm, used his strength, and the Lord your God has commanded you to observe the Sabbath. What are we to observe? We're to be reminded the Sabbath, the day of rest, was a day to commemorate the fact that God was powerful enough to take his people who were nothing but slaves out of that land of Egypt where the great pharaohs had ordered the making of pyramids. Pyramids to this day, uh, scientists and engineers and architects have tried to figure out how the Egyptians not only built them, but how they are built, in what ways are they fitted together. It's still a mystery, the making of the pyramids. But God, over the intelligence of the Egyptians, over the strength of the most powerful people of that day, he led his slaves out. How, how could God do that? Well, he used power through Moses and others and the parting of the Red Sea. He took care of his people. Well, if God loved that people so much to deliver them, how much more are we to examine the salvation? There are various kinds of deliverance. One is from an enemy, from oppressors. But the greatest work of salvation that we know of, our greatest work of deliverance is salvation in Jesus Christ. And there you could examine again and again the work of his deliverance through Jesus Christ. I'll connect this deliverance uh, and salvation uh, in greater detail a little bit later on. Remember that you were slaves, he says. Now you are set free. Commemorate your freedom, your deliverance. And so in this time where you give unto God what is his in terms of enjoyment of the Sabbath, I remember that it's not, not the average kind of thing. It's not the normal stuff, the common stuff of life. It represents this day, this time of rest represents his character, a capsule of holiness that as God has said, be holy, he invites us into his holy chamber. And that gives us pleasure when we take his inv invitation and enter and rest and cease and say, God, work on me. Work on me. Change me to your delight. Make me more pleasurable for you. I'm here for your sake. While I rest, you do a work in me. Revive my soul, my heart. Rest for God's sake. Notes God's handiwork in creation. Observes as well the deliverance and salvation that God has provided. He restores my soul for God's sake. Hear the most common psalm known uh, among believers. He restores my soul. He guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. There it is. For his sake. We could go through the Bible and list again and again. For Jesus' sake. For his name's sake. For God's sake. And it goes on and on. I'm resting now, not just for my pleasure or because I need it or so I can be uh, ready to go back to work, but I'm resting. Lord, take pleasure. 
take pleasure as I sit still and wait for you and long for you? Ask yourself, am I just a human doing? Nothing more than that? Or am I a human being? Rest, man's gift to God. Key question, did I enter my chambers of rest for the pleasure of God today? Am I human doing or human being? Do, 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 is that what I amount to, just doing? Do, 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 go, 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 go. Do people just see me running and chasing? Or am I a human being that can just be? Jesus said, I am the vine, you are the branches. Remain or rest in me. A branch does not struggle to make leaves. It simply is attached to the vine. Just be attached to Jesus and he will do his work far beyond that you can possibly imagine. TBS Seminary is a nonprofit project. Our joint effort will bring about the common purpose of making Christian education available around the world and developing good Christian servant leaders. You have a unique opportunity to partner in this effort through your prayer and or financial support of TVS Ministry. For more information, please visit tvsseminary.com.